Hello, hello, and welcome to Prague Chattery 777. We have reached um, a very interesting moment in Vandergraaf history. We're talking about Vandergraaf Generator, obviously, although the generator for this album has been taken away. Um, so a big lineup change has happened in Vandergraaf land. Uh, the band disintegrated after three very good albums. Um, what was the order? I think it was Hugh Banton left first, again, attributing to madness, touring, and uh, wanting to be closer to his family, that kind of thing. And David Jackson, I believe, followed suit. So the band was left to just Peter Hamill and Guy Evans. So naturally, to replace their um, organ player and sax player, they brought Nick Potter back. Nick Potter, uh, he is this guy here right there. Uh, he was on the early Vandergraaf albums. He was on uh, Least We Can Do Is Wave To Each Other and half of H to H E. Great bass player. He's back in the fold. Uh, and they also got um, uh, Graham Smith. Graham Smith, that's his name. Oh my god, I thought I forgot his name. That would have been very embarrassing. Uh, on violin. Great violin player too. Great violinist. So, kind of an unusual way to um, blunt the trauma of losing two very vital members. Obviously, this would mean that the Vandergraaf sound would be wildly changed. Those thick organ passages and chords and whatnot, those are gone. Those are a thing of the past. David Jackson's saxophones and flutes, again, vital part of the Vandergraaf sound. They have, they have passed. They are gone. But we still have Guy Evans' wonderful drumming, and we still have Peter Hamill being Peter Hamill, which is awesome. Uh, interesting side note, by the way, the album we're doing, I didn't mention it, we're doing The Quiet Zone, The Pleasure Zone. Quiet Zone, The Pleasure Dome by Vandergraaf. This is 1977. Um, Quiet Zone is the first side, and The Pleasure Dome is the second side. Uh, take this out of the sleeve here. God, I'm, this, this improv, this improv talking is, is going against me today. That's okay. Totally okay. I'm just distracted here looking at it. Uh, but yeah, any, anyway, interesting side note about Quiet Zone, Pleasure Dome. Um, as the band was put back together, uh, they released, uh, not as a band, as a Peter Hamill solo album, Peter Hamill did Over, which was his breakup album. Uh, filled with love songs, and uh, it's a great album. It is, it, it's not a sappy album by any means. It deals with that uh, concept, but it is by no means a sappy album. It is, it is very intense. And the, uh, the band on Hamill's solo album, Over, is the same band that is on here. Although, again, the difference between Hamill and Vandergroff, it's very obvious that Over is a Hamill solo record, and this is a, a band effort. Uh, but, yeah... This album is great. It, it again, it, it's one of my favorite albums. I, I, I would, but it, it's kind of a separate thing. You know what I mean? It's not. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't. It's a part of the Vandergraaf Generator story, but it's almost like a new band that was that was that was put together, and I, I guess it was probably a nod to the to, to David Jackson and Hugh Banton to drop the Generator and just call it Vandergraaf. I guess that's a mark of respect. Because um, obviously they didn't leave under acrimonious circumstances. They're very, you know, well put together, nice gentlemen. But yeah, it, it, it's it's just, it's a very it's an oddball album. It's very interesting. Uh, I really really like it. Like I said, I mean it it, it would be my favorite Van der Graaf album. But it's like it's just so separate from the main run of albums that it's 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 almost it, it has to be held onto its own merits. I think because it's so good. Um, yeah, obviously the sound is so different with, with the violin and having Nick Potter on the bass. He uses this really distorted tone, too, which is really cool on some of the tracks. Uh, so yeah, I'll just start talking about the tracks then. Uh, the first side, uh, Quiet Zone. <laughs> I, I really like the album cover, too. It's, like, it's, it's, I suppose it's meant to be Peter Hamill. It looks like him. He's very skinny, as Hamill is. Uh kind of swinging amongst the atmosphere of Earth, above the atmosphere. Quite cool. Uh, that first side opens with uh, Lizard Play, which is 
I've always really liked that song. It, it's a welcome return to the acoustic guitar, actually. Um, excuse me. Um, the acoustic guitar was obviously a big part of the early Vandergraaff period, but pretty well, yeah, it was totally abandoned from God Bluff through to World Record. And uh, it's kind of a welcome return, that nice little opening. It's cool. It's almost folky, and then the violin comes in, and uh, um, yeah, it's a great little number. Big thing to note with this album, uh, a lot of Vandergraaff's music, obviously, is known for being very big. They've got very long songs. The songs on here are quite quite constrained. I mean, there's a few songs that are literally just a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, tightly arranged little piece. And Lizard Play is one of those songs. And I, I, it's great, you know. It, uh... and the, the other thing worth noting about this album is the lyrics are very strange. Very convoluted, unusual lyrics. Even, you know, their other lyrics were kind of very literal and, you know, even though they were a bit ambiguous and kind of hard to discern, the lyrics on this album are just totally bizarre for the most part. Uh, Lizard Play, the first song, I think, is kind of a love song. It's talking about meeting a new lady, I think. <laughs> I think, like I said, it, they're hard to describe. Anyway, the second song is The Habit of the Broken Heart which is a wonderful song. Uh, kind of became a, a Hamill solo thing. He played a few of the songs off this album in a solo capacity. But Habit of the Broken Heart is really, really good. Um, again, it's a little bit simpler and a little bit more compact than earlier Vandergraaff stuff, but it still has, you know, there's a journey to it. it, it you get the first couple of verses, kind of set it up, and then it kind of builds an in intensity, and it, it comes to this really, really great moment where... Uh, you know, the whole band is, is on fire and it cuts out really quickly and you just get this guitar and it's... <laughs> my, little, my little musical interludes are no good, I know. I'm well aware. But it's great. It, it, that, that's, a, that's a highlight moment, I think, of Habit of the Broken Heart. Great song. Again, lots of acoustic guitar, which is a welcome return. Uh, then we move on to the third song of the album, Siren Song, which this has definitely become a Peter Hamill solo classic. I saw Hamill solo in 2008, and unfortunately, I, re I knew I really wanted to see Peter Hamill, but I hadn't yet collected very much of his repertoire, so I didn't, um, I didn't know a lot of the songs. But fortunately, he opened with Siren Song, which I had heard at that point, and I thought, oh, wonderful. Uh, and it, it's, it's really good. I'm not really sure what it's about. Uh, it's another song that I'm, I'm just not too sure about. But uh, it's a piano kind of a thing. Um, and even though it is a shorter song and more compact, it still is definitely Vandergroff. It still has that journey kind of feel to it. You know, it, it does go from one place and it ends in a totally different place, which is, which is cool. Great song, Siren Song. Uh, like, it's not my favorite on the album, but I, I, I do obviously recognize that it is a classic. Uh, then we move on. We move on to um, Last Frame, is the final song of the Quiet Zone side, and I think it's the best on the side, and it, I, I think it's kind of a forgotten classic. I think amongst Vandergraaff fans, I mean, they know it's it's wonderful, and Hamill fans, they know it's wonderful. He's played it solo live a few times, and the band played it live uh, when they were existing. Uh, it's really good. I think this is the closest on the first side to uh, the early Vandergraaff stuff. And it almost has a new wavy kind of feel. It kind of it kind of foreshadows what Hamill was was going to do with his solo stuff in the late '70s with the Future Now, PH7, and Black Box. Uh, it, it's really good. It, it, this I think streamlined actually is probably a better word to describe this album than the previous three. Uh, yeah, it, it's they're tight arrangements and they're well played and they're modern. At least they were modern in the mid in the late seventies. Anyways, I, I, I it's, it's great. It's, I, lo I love it. Great first side. Then we flip it over, done, and we get the Pleasure Dome, which is the side that has the band. And Guy Evans wearing a hoodie with his beard and his in his very cool aviator sunglasses. Very interesting. Um, and yeah, the the album carries on being very good on the second side, obviously. 
opens with the wave, which is another really simple song. It, it's it's just kind of a verse chorus piece, piano song. Really good though. Uh, I'm a big fan. It's, uh, it's about constant change, I guess, and how each wave. You know the 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 ponderer who the 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 wondering person that uh, observes the changes that come with the changing tides and waves, and the person that just kind of rolls with the waves. I guess that's kind of what it's about. Really good song. Love it. Short little piece, but really good. Then we move on to um, Cat's Eye, Brackets Yellow Fever. This is prob this is the madness moment. This is the madness moment of the album where that classic Van der Graaff da, 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 craziness comes in. Uh, and yeah, really, really good. I don't really know. I <laughs> couldn't really discern the lyrics. Like I said, generally, they're very convoluted and confusing on this album. But the violin playing by uh, Graham Smith there, just, just intense, just intense. And then it winds up in this kind of classical, dramatic ending. It's, it's, it's great. And then there's weird kind of a sound effect. I wonder if it, I, I, I always think it's the bass that's doing that. Almost sounds like digital water drips, but not digital as we know it today. I don't know. That that maybe that made sense to some viewers out there. I don't know. Good song, Cat's Eye. Great song. Then we move on to The Sphinx in the Face. This became a Hamill solo classic. It was performed regularly by the K Group in the early 80s. Um, and it's a great song. It opens with Nick Potter on guitar. I always thought that was Hamill playing it, but it's a little too clean for Hamill. Hamill is a bit of a raunchy guitar player, and that's that's good for him. I think he I think it's great that he's as raunchy as he is. It kind of it really adds to what what he does and what he contributes to projects is his guitar playing style, which is rough around the edges, but it is musical. It is, you know, he may not be a shredder or a technical kind of guitar player, but like I said, what he contributes is is useful and earthquaking, evidently. I think the camera shocked a little bit there. Maybe not. But yeah, Sinks in the Face. It, it's classic Van der Graaff. It's it's shorter. It's got that guitar riff uh, at the start, but it has this it has this journey to it. It does. It still changes. There's still, um, you know, a turnaround where you think it's about one thing and then the lyrics twist around and it, it throws you off. I think it's about youth, the naivety of youth. And, uh, yeah, it's a great song, The Sphinx in the Face. Uh, then we were, then we uh, wind up to what's really kind of the last song on the album, uh, Chemical World, which I think is about drugs, I think. Uh, and it, it's great. Very dynamic, has these nice little slow acoustic-y bits. And uh, there's a really kind of psych psychedelic bit where he talks about... Uh, Cyclops and stuff, and the vocals are very processed, and the, the, the kind of that weird experimentation that had been seen on Pawn Hearts is kind of brought back. Because the the albums before this, God Bluff, Still Life, and World Record, they don't have the same studio experimentation. Like I said, the thing was more about the band playing, uh, and I think they got a little more curious in the studio with this one, perhaps. But yeah, Chemical World is great. Um, Lots of twists and turns. There's lots to it, even though it's a shorter song. I think that's that's kind of the theme with a lot of these songs on this. A couple of, you know, three chord wonders, but it's still Vandergraaff. It still is that the the spirit of Vandergraaff is still there, even though the instrumentation is different and the the tones are different and the sound of the band is different. It's still quintessentially Vandergraaff music. And then it wraps up with uh, a reprise of Sphinx which is kind of got some just kind of silly falsetto voices and it it's the the end kind of starts out awkwardly they're just you're so near you're so far nah. <laughs> they got a strange and quirky new wavy new agey for the time kind of stuff and then the, the the rest of the band kind of fades in and it goes into the big the rock out at the end which is cool um and, and the production on this album is, is absolutely fantastic. Like the drum sound, the drums are just right in your face. Uh, having the acoustic guitar, like I said, is back. The vocals, I think, are a little bit back in the mix, perhaps. But 
again, it, it, none of it, I, I, this is a really, really good album. This is a classic, classic album. I, I'm sure I've said that about every one of these Vandergraaff albums, but you know, if if I you know, Pond Hearts is essential because it's Pond Hearts. God Bluff is my personal favorite, and Still Life is objectively their best. Uh, so I mean, they've had a really good track record up to this point. But I think you know, me personally, of of, and I mind you, I listen to, I, I love all the stuff Vandergraaff did, and I love a lot of the Peter Hamill stuff. Pretty well, all the stuff Peter Hamill did. And this is this is a, a seminal record. This is absolutely fantastic. I may not have done it justice. I mean. Yammering on about it a lot, but yeah, the Quiet Zone, the Pleasure Dome by Vandergraaff. No generator. Classic album. Uh, I think it's essential. Doesn't really fit in with the rest of the Vandergraaff albums, but it's still Vandergraaff, um, and it's great. It's one of my favorites, and I I think you should listen to it. So uh, yeah, that's about it for uh, this particular little video. I will sign off now. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time for Vital. That's the one. Okay, thank you. See you later.